Hi, um, sorry for the interruption. This is the second week in the row that I've gone live and had um, internet troubles. I've uh, been trouble, trying to troubleshoot with the internet provider, but um, we have not come to a resolution as yet. So I apologize for the break. Kind of just give a little background and pick up where we left off. So um, we were talking about the the swelling that happens when we're in the healing phase and the um, the swelling causes the periosteal layer over the bone to stretch and that stretched out um, portion can then tear the outer ring of the disc so that the disc uh, that becomes then a herniated disc because the inside portion so you have the outside portion the the ring the annulus fibrosis and then the gel-like portion in the center, well, once that outside ring is, is torn, then that gel-like center portion, the nucleus pulpus, then kind of bulges out and then hits the ver vertebral canal. And so the pressure on the spinal nerve causes this acute pain. So there you're having acute pain. You also have the bone pain because when the that periosteal layer is stretched you um it has a lot of nerves and a highly sensitive nerve so you already have the pain engaged here but it's going to become um more intense when you have the disc that's herniated so you might also have heard of it as a slip disc or a disc protrusion okay now this all can become even further exacerbated if we have extra water retention going on, which would call that, cause that swelling to be even more intense. And why we would have that extra swelling is if we have this thing called, according to German New Medicine, the syndrome, which is any time you have, pull out our little chart again, Anytime you are in the healing phase, okay, this first portion of the healing phase, okay, of one, um, you're on one process, you've resolved one conflict, you're over here, but then have a conflict active abandonment or existence conflict, which you'll see with that one, you have water retention in the conflict active phase. I won't go into all the details. I actually did go into a lot of the detail on the German New Medicine on gout or GNM on gout video. So if you want more details on that, go check that out um, because gout is arthritis, um, which is a, a healing, a self-devaluation conflict affecting the joints while at the same time um, having this um, other syndrome thing going on, okay? So that is going to worsen your the swelling that's going to um, exacerbate it okay and so um well, we have to keep our eyes out for that too um if that's if that's occurring so you can also have muscle spasms which is engaging another conflict the conflict of not being able to move because you're in so much pain and it's hard to move the area is inflamed and swollen and just isn't working like it normally does um, so you can have muscle spasms um, with that one, okay? And so two things we have to look for. If we knew all this and the body was given time to heal without interruption, like without a new conflict to interrupt it, for example, theoretically, we should be able to see the healing occur. And I believe this actually does coincide with how conventional medicine or a large portion. I mean, I think, I think there are different camps according to like can herniated discs heal or not. Some people in the conventional world will say, conventional medical world will say yes. And maybe some people would say no. Um, but at least if we, if we have enough of people saying yes, there's probably some pretty good evidence that we're seeing it actually heal. But what, how your emotions play an important role here is that we uh, want to be sure that we're understanding why this pain's coming about. It's a healing, it's in reaction to healing. It's part of the healing process. And it's not a worsening of your body. And if you know that, 
you can expect oh this is what's going on in my body now you may not exactly oh yes this is the moment when the the disc herniated or or you may know okay so knowing that some more acute pain could occur while you're already having that back pain in healing is uh pretty pretty helpful to know and and you can also the key piece here is i'm not getting worse therefore you don't create a new self-devaluation conflict. So that's one piece. That's where your emotional, um, where your understanding of this is going to help you tame your emotions with that and, and not allow you to get all panicky. Okay. And now the other piece here is if we've done our work and we've identified what actually was the conflict that set this whole ball in motion. Okay. We want to make sure we know what that is so that we're in a position not to have to repeat it or if it does if the same scenario is bound to occur again that we're in a better place up here to be able to deal with it so how do you do that well i'm a psychotherapist and that's something that i would actually you know help a person with we're dealing with self-worth all the time we're dealing with um, self-devaluation complex we didn't necessarily learn it <laughs> by that term but that's what we deal with all the time not always related to physical ailments but obviously even here learning the basics today you would be able to look for okay what's what's going on here and how can we shore up a person's self-worth how can we also help them to not feel devalued by their experience here um, by the initial what set it in motion experience and also by the experience of the pain. There are many layers of this. And it's not just the experience of the physical pain, but what happens then when a person's had pain for a while and they start to feel not worthy because they can't do the things they used to do. Now that creates another piece that allows this whole bit to continue if a person is feeling self-devalued or less worthy in some way. You can see how easy this can become, you know, snowballed and prolonged into the future. And so our job is to really pay attention to the emotional pieces, understand this whole biological process that's happening and the integration of that with the psyche, um, with the brain level and taking all of that together. Now, uh, not a piece related to German New Medicine, but I find a very helpful therapy to uh, deal with multiple aspects of chronic pain and illness is EFT, which stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. It's also known as tapping or acupressure desensitization, where we're tapping at various acupressure points um, on the body while we're keying in and saying phrases very targeted and specific to the emotional conflicts that a person is experiencing that takes us down to specific events. So this is something that is really lined up quite well with German New Medicine because there was an activating event and EFT often helps us to find it, especially when a person can't seem to figure out what it is. So um, that should hopefully give you a little bit of insight into what's happening for you if you're somebody who's been dealing with a herniated disc or even back pain in general, just understand the basic concepts from a GNM perspective. So if you come up with questions, feel free to write them in the comment section below. If there was anything that you took away from this today that helped to bring more understanding, put a little uh, like or a heart there, thanks. And um, thanks for watching. Also, you can join my free Facebook group. It's Chronic Pain Mind Body Empowerment Group. And like I said, it's free. You can learn all about mind body medicine. You can share your emotions. It's a support group as well as a forum for learning and understanding um, different pathways to finding relief. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate your patience with the technical difficulties. Um, but uh, uh, we'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. All right, take care. Bye-bye.